And so it was all about just like, you know, knowing that like you have the power, you have the ability to be able to like, you know, create the success that you want just by believing in yourself. I was like, it don't matter what somebody tells you. Cause you know, some people can listen to other people, give them advice saying that you're not going to really do that well right. and say, and it really feel like that's going to be the case. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not going to do good. Cause they said, I'm not going to No, You tell them like, look, I don't care what competition is out there. The only competition I have is myself. Fact. You know what I mean? I become a better version of myself every single day. Mm -hmm. Like whatever I did last time, I need to beat what I did the last time I did whatever it was that I tried to accomplish before. What's up, what's up, man? It's the boy Pushman Mitch, host of the No Fluff Podcast, back again with an episode. I got my friend Tor, my brother in here going crazy, Brad Panther, a.k.a. Home health care specialist, man. What's up with you, bro? Hey, let's get it, man. So happy to be here with my brother, dog. <laughs> hey, let's go. Yo, we still kind of stoked, man. We just got back from the Lamborghini meet, bro. That was crazy. Man, Lambo rally was off the chain, man. If y'all have never been to an experience like that before, when you see 200 Lambos coming down the freeway, going 100 miles an hour, freaking all the way up to 200, and you sitting over here looking at the helicopters in the sky following you, Man, it's like Grand Theft Auto five stars. That's crazy. I didn't even <laughs> think about it like that. That's how it is, though. You know what? It's like you all the stuff that's going on, I don't even realize it because I'm just so in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, all that stuff is going on. We got like, a police escort. We got the helicopters following us. And we're just dipping through the trees. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And you know that Miami traffic was crazy, though. Yeah. So the fact that we had that many Lambos cutting through in and out and everybody was driving and staying like together and we still kept the pack tight. Like, it just shows you, man, that like literally, man, everybody was just like holding it down. Yeah, it's got some, we got some good drivers, man. Yeah, man. All right, so Brad, man, let's let's talk about you, man. Um, it's twenty twenty two. Let's talk about what's new for you, and then we're gonna go in the backstory a little bit. Okay, awesome. what's new in twenty twenty two? Oh shoot, man! Right now, I'm about to go ahead and compete on the next season, Ninja Warrior. So mm -hmm. I just got the call. I'm about to fly out in another two weeks, so I can go ahead and do the competition. Can't wait because they said they had one hundred fifty thousand applicants this year. I got to be one of the lucky four hundred out of one hundred fifty thousand to compete. So, Damn. you know, I got to go in there and get it in, baby. That's so, crazy. So, so this is your second time, though, because I watched the first one. We mm -hmm. all went to your house and watched the actual episode, yeah, which was man. dope. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. Though. And, like, how you stay in shape, like, to even be able to get ready to do not one, but two seasons of this, bro? Bro, my hands are ripped up right now from doing all these crazy plyometric workouts where I got to hang from my fingertips. I got to be able to do laches, swings, got to do balance obstacles. A lot of it's kind of like using your own body weight. Mm -hmm. You got to put your hands to get your grip strength up in these 10-pound bags of rice. And I do it like Mr. Miyagi style. Like, mm -hmm. you know, y'all watch Karate Kid. You got to start spinning your fingers around. And that builds up the strength in your fingertips so you have more dexterity. Mm -hmm. And then those little small twitch muscles that you don't ever think about using, they get built up real hard. So then you can actually, like, hold all your body weight when you're doing the swinging. That's crazy. So, you just mm -hmm. said muscles I never even heard about. Oh, what? yeah. yeah. And yeah. what the hell is dexterity? Hey, man, that's about how you can move these damn fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude. Yo, you gotta, that's yeah, crazy, you bro. All right. <laughs> so, you, uh, so the first um, season, you, uh, you, I watched it. It was dope. Mm -hmm. And this season, so are, are you going to win it? Like, what happens if you win? So, this is the thing. Like, you get a billion dollars if you win, but there's only been two winners in 15 years. So, when you win, you got to complete every obstacle. Every single obstacle without falling. Damn. And I fell twice. <laughs> 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 but you had a good time doing it, bro. Absolutely, man. I do this for fun, man. Like anything that I do in life, whether it's like, you know, business, whether it's like, you know, things I do for competitions, it's always about having a good time, you right. know, because I want to make sure I just enjoy my experiences to the fullest. And that's the whole thing about being an entrepreneur, right? Is right. that like we literally try to make sure we have the time to be able to enjoy, you know, all the freedom that we have to be able to go do the things that we want to do. Facts. And so. That's all it's about, actually, man, freedom. And mm -hmm. like a lot of us are really, we don't even know what we looking for or trying to achieve. And it's freedom, really. Mm -hmm. So it's not about money, it's just about options, it's about freedom, being able to do what you actually want to do instead of what you can do. Absolutely. It's reality, bro. So when I see you, you like the epitome of that. Because oh. you're just living your life, you're doing all different type of competitions, you're riding in McLarens, all this stuff. Like, And it's crazy, bro. So I remember when I first met you, man, I seen your blue McLaren, it's like, uh, what's it called? The chrome blue? Yeah, the blue chrome. Yo, it's crazy. So let's talk about the cars too, bro. So what made you start getting into these exotic cars and motorcycles? Well, even then, just like you just said, when we first met, I was wearing the blue, right? Right. But he was rocking the Grimace purple, though. Y'all know yes, about the Grimace sir. purple? <laughs> yes, sir. I was I like, that, that purple. purple was insane. I was like, I was going to wrap my new one purple like that, too. But they don't, they don't have the Plum Explosion purple no more. Really? Yeah, you got to get it, like, uh. made from uh, 3M. Bro, when I first saw you and stuff, you was coming down the highway. And this is the funny thing. Like, I waved at you. And I was like, okay. He just stopped by me, like, real, real quick. And in the light, I was like, hey, man, what's up, what's up, what's up? Because, you know, I like bringing exotics into the group because we got like 160 exotics that are in the group. So I was just yeah. like, 
man, let me see if I can go ahead and bring him in. But you didn't know because you was on the phone that time. Ah. And then when I met you later on, you were like, oh, I didn't know you was waving me down that day that you had saw me. We was in traffic. <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro, I'm trying to get you in the crew, man. I was like, come on, we got to bring more exotics because, you know, I just like bringing people together. For sure. It's for always sure. been my personality. So, cool. you know, I see other successful people and everybody's riding the same. I was like, hey, man, let's all link up together and have fun and all ride at the same time. So, but yeah, so, I mean, that's the thing. But, you know, the car scene in Atlanta has just been just blowing out so what, what made you get a mclaren like what made you get that because i was like man i've always liked mclarens bro like even when i was in uh, elementary school my brother said he wanted a lamborghini mm -hmm. and i said i wanted the mclaren so we both had calendars when we were growing up right mm -hmm. and we would just look at each page and literally the first page was the mclaren second page was lamborghini and we both wrote on there like look these are the cars we're going to get when we grow up man. so my brother he got his lamborghini aventador right and i got my mclaren we was like look we literally got the cars we said we were going to get when we were kids nothing doper than that yeah man so that's all manifestation law of attraction it's a fact you know spoken into existence at a young age yeah that's true man a lot of <laughs> like I, I never even you know that's dope that you even said that man because mm -hmm. me i never really i mean it's not that i didn't like lamborghinis i never thought of a lamborghini as a car that i would get mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. now I have them, but it's like literally I got exposed to the the proximity of them. Like I, I went to a Lamborghini dealership and then I was like, like I got to sit in it. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. damn, mm -hmm. I do want one of these. Like this yeah. would be dope. And then I like the same thing with a Rolls Royce. But it's just like those things are not around my neighborhood. I didn't grow up around that stuff. So yeah, let's talk about uh, mm -hmm. how you how you grew up, bro. Like what like where are you where are you originally from? And like, how was life growing up? So born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. And mm -hmm. like, you know, when I was growing up, um, you know, my parents, they basically were into computer technology. So the funny thing is they actually were trying to build out their own business to be able to like do networking with like Cisco systems, uh, CCIE, basically all the things that like, you know, were creating like the internet before we even had the internet. Cause you know, we were growing up, mm -hmm. we didn't really have computers. People Facts. didn't even have them in their home. We didn't have cell phones, all the stuff that these kids got now. We didn't have none of that stuff. They ain't gonna never know about a uh, house phone and then you pick up the phone and your mom pick up the other side to listen to what you're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then sitting there spinning that little rotary thing oh, over and over again God. and then you mess up the phone number and then you gotta do it all over. Man, what? Well, I used to mess my finger up all the time. My only person who had that is my dad had that at his house. And every time I used to go try to use the phone, I'd be like, yo, mom, just dial the number for me. <laughs> so that's, it was crazy. Absolutely. So the thing is, like, you know, we used to watch how hard our parents work. You know what I mean? And so, you know, that kind of like created like a little niche in my brother's mind, like in, uh, in my mind to like, look, I mean, we've seen them literally like go from like having nothing to being able to like, you know, create their own business. And when they did, we were like, OK, that was really inspirational for us. So we kind of had like a little bit of a guideline of like what we wanted to do when it came to business. And then they grew their company in uh, to a position to where it started to become international. And so they had a location in Africa. They had a location in Malaysia, uh, Singapore, and they got to a point to where they became one of the largest network providers in uh, the United States, which was Dang. crazy. So Dang. it was insane. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you get really, really big and sometimes you lose it all. So then they got to a point to where literally the company expanded. Everything was great. They was blowing things out the water. And then after that, they lost everything. Dang, how, how does something like that happen? Well, they went through a really, really, really bad divorce. Ah, and it, was, it, was. it was one of those things where like, you know, sometimes things don't work out and, you know, like, you know, parents might agree or disagree on certain things. But, you know, even though we saw like things happen to where like, you know, they came back off of like that really, really high horse that they were riding on. Like we still had everything instilled in us mm -hmm. as far as like what we wanted to do for ourselves. Because a lot of people usually give up once they get to a certain point and they say, damn, like, well, I lost it and we're on top of the world. But it doesn't mean that you can't do it again. Right. And me and my brother, we were like the type of people who were like, you know what? We can go out there and do it ourselves. We saw yeah. what our parents were able to accomplish. Let's go ahead and do it ourselves. Y'all damn sure you know? did. <laughs> Y'all damn sure did. So yeah, let's talk so. about that. Um, so your brother, uh, he's in the real estate field. Mm -hmm. But you, you do real estate too, some capacity, right? Yeah, so this is how it all started, right? Okay. So we were both like, okay, my brother's riding around in Centos and those little uh, vans filling up soap dispensers in a bunch of different toilet and restrooms all over the place, right? I'm sitting over here like, okay, I'm working at a cubicle doing bill point auditing for like telecommunication companies. So like Verizon, Nortel, freaking uh, AT&T, all that stuff. And I was like, okay, you know, there's a house selling in my neighborhood for like 40 grand less than what like my property was going for. Mm -hmm. So me and my brother like, look, hey, let's go ahead and buy that and see if we can make a profit off of it. So sure enough, we went and bought it, only spent $5,000 to renovate it. And then after that, we sold it for mm -hmm. like about what, 40 grand more than when we actually bought it for. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, dang, I mean, my whole year salary plus some. Right. So I was like, you know what? I'm quitting the next day. The next day, literally went to my job and I was like, okay, you know what? Hey, I'm out. Like, here's my resignation. Here's <laughs> my resignation. But I was like, just in case things don't work out, I told them like, look, I got a work study program out in Japan. 
probably be out there for a few months. I did the same <laughs> thing when I left. Home. <laughs> <laughs> if things don't work out in this business, like, can I come back? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, once you finish your work study, you know, in Japan, you can come on back. And I was like, okay, cool. So, of course, never went back. But, you know, I wanted to make sure I had like a little, you know, security just in case I felt wow. like you know, things would work out. So me and my brother did that deal. And then uh, after that, that's when the bubble burst. So we thought we were going to do another deal by like building some new houses. And then those new houses didn't sell. So when those new houses didn't sell, we were like, oh, crap, what are we going to do? Because we're about to lose them. Then somebody sent me a message saying, they're like, look, you can turn these houses into personal care homes. And if you have like, you know, one client in the home is $4,000 a month, you put five in there, you got 20000 a month. And we we're like, you know what? I never thought about that before. Because I was taking care of my granddad before he had passed away cancer. And I actually liked the whole caretaking aspect because we had a lot of fun together before he had passed. And I was like, you know what? This is something I've always liked doing anyway. Even though it wasn't what my degree was in, even though I had no experience, I had no knowledge of it. But I was like, I'm going to Georgia Tech. I'm smart enough to figure this out. So then I went and just took all the classes, did all the stuff from the state, and then opened up the personal care homes. And then that saved us from losing those homes. Mm. And then I was able to go ahead and like get clients to actually live in those homes once we got approved. But before that, we weren't making no money. So it took about two years to get approved. Mm. So our, her, our personal home went into foreclosure. I had to file bankruptcy. <clears throat> they were trying to repossess my car. So my car, I actually hid behind a dumpster. So I literally had like this dumpster in the back of my complex. So I was like, look, y'all ain't about to get my whip. Like that's gonna be the last <laughs> thing that I keep. And I heard the tow truck man come every single night at two o'clock in the morning, just riding around. And I was like, oh yeah, he's trying to get my car, but he ain't gonna find it. And every single day he couldn't find it. Dang. So. <laughs> And then during the time while I was waiting for like the personal care home thing to drop, I was like, I still need to get some cash in. So what I did was uh, during that time, people didn't have HDMI cables or didn't have like, you know, flat screen TVs. So I bought a bunch of them from China and I'll sell them out the trunk of my car at the Target up the street. So I'd be mm. like, before y'all go into this Target, I got the cables for 99 cents and I was selling for $20 because they were selling for 30 mm -hmm. at Target. So I went and bought a whole bunch of them from China, brought them, put them in the back of my trunk. Sat there in front of Target. I was like, hey, before you go in there and get them, hey, I got them in my trunk. And I was just selling them $20 a pop, $20 a pop, $20 a pop. And that's how I made my money, too. You know, Damn. while I was trying to. That's, that's a real entrepreneur, bro. That's real yeah. hustle stuff. Yeah. A lot of people don't know those stories, man. All they see is yeah. now. They see you in McLaren's and all this stuff. And it's just like, man, yo, he, he must have always had it like that. But they don't really know that you got to really grind and do that hustle. That's why I got mm -hmm. these signs here. Yeah, the hustle, man. execution, Absolutely. and grind. Because regardless, yeah. if you don't have these three pillars, man, it's very hard for you to become successful in any business. Mm -hmm. Don't matter if you're smart. Don't matter if you know about money or credit. Mm -hmm. If you don't got these three, it's going to be very difficult for you to get busy. Absolutely. And you got it. You was hustling. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> bro, I had to. Course. I had to, man. And the thing is, like, it's one of those things where no matter how hard you fall, you still got to realize you can always pick yourself back up. It don't <laughs> matter. Any tunnel you drive through, there's always an exit at the other end of the tunnel. It just depends on how long you want to stay in it. You know, and so for me, I was just like, look, I mean, if you're at the very, very bottom, you can only go up like you could really only go up. Fact. So the thing is, like, all you have to do is just keep on working, keep on working, keep on working. And, and eventually things are going to work out. Mm -hmm. It's just that sometimes you just might have to, like, you know, adapt or you might have to pivot here and there. But I mean, you just keep your mind focused on what you want. And my mm -hmm. mind was still always focused on success. Even when I first got my wife. Right. Like most women will leave you if your car gets declined at McDonald's. My car kept getting declined when we went to McDonald's. Like, baby, I can't even afford a happy meal for you right now. You know? Nice. And she's still like, oh, it's all right. I'll take care of it. And I'm like, shoot. That's why I was like, hey, you're going to be the person I marry. <laughs> for real. And, you know, it's hard to find that, man. You know, for me, in a, on a dating mm -hmm. aspect, man, I'm already at a, a point where I'm successful. And now I'm dating now? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, my God. Bro. You don't know. As soon as I, I fall in the tough times, these girls are out of there. They skating. <laughs> They're going to be like, what? You can't take care of us no more? Week, <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Especially, and think about these day and age, like, let your car decline to McDonald's. Well, first off, just try to take a girl to McDonald's. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't even go to McDonald's. It's so <laughs> frown. Yo, do you know what's so crazy, man? And people talk so crazy about McDonald's when all of us was raised on McDonald's. Everybody. All of us was raised on McDonald's. Everybody. We went to McDonald's. That's the <laughs> easiest way. Like, well, your mom, are we going on the trip? We got a basketball game. After the game, we go to McDonald's. That's Before, what I'm saying. You, in the breakfast time, I'm talking about McDonald's was the play. So all of us are still healthy now. <laughs> we grew up eating McDonald's. Like, we so still they, got clawed arteries you know what and all saying? this other stuff. So, they got I mean, a bad rep. It's crazy. But um, that's that's a that's a, a testament, though, to your wife, too. Shout out to her. Mm -hmm. um, because she just got uh, a new Bentley and a, a, a Lambo, right? Yeah, so my wife has a Rolls Royce Wraith, a Bentley Bentayga, and a Lambo Huracan. It's crazy. And that's my wife. You know what I'm saying? That's she crazy. got the trifecta. That's all three. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Yeah, That's like, so. I'm talking about y'all living how, like, what when, when people say keeping up with the Joneses, they talking about you. <laughs> you know that? Oh, man. Oh, man. Not even close, man. I just, 
you know, we just try to do what we can when we can and just enjoy the, like, you know, the things that we like. Because for some reason, we've just always liked cars. Never did I think we'd have like six exotic cars. Right. And that's it. Like, you know, I just I never thought about that when I was younger. But, you know, as things got older and things became, you know, uh, more successful as we got along. I'm just like, look, hey, well, why not? You know, you know, what I just thought about hmm? you got a blue yours. I do. And you didn't take it to the Raleigh. I didn't. And you just rode with your brother. So what yeah. happened? So I know you, uh, you, you mm-hmm. renting out your yours, right? Mm-hmm. So you're doing a play. He's doing a play. See, that's the play right there. That's the play. <laughs> no, but that's dope. So let's talk about that. So you using that. Uh, it's not a liability. It's an asset. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the thing is, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that these exotic cars are so valuable when it comes to like people who want to rent them out. And of course, like Mitch has told you guys over and over and over again, how you can turn your liabilities into assets. And he's absolutely right. Because that's the thing. Like, I mean, these high-end cars, as expensive as they are, they pay for themselves. You literally can ride for free by just renting out these cars Crazy. and then let them literally just like debt service. Like you don't have to worry about that $4,000 a month uh, price tag because everybody's like, well, I don't think I could ever see myself like, you know, spending $4,000 on a car. You got to realize that car is literally going to pay itself off by other people. You literally renting that car out. You know Crazy. what I mean? So the thing is, you don't think about the aspect of how much it costs. You think about what it's going to generate. That's true. Well, it's it's just a it's the mindset. You know, poor people think day to day, middle class people think month to month, rich mm-hmm. people think year to year, real rich people think decade to decade. Mm-hmm. So if you're thinking about long term, you can kind of just balance it out and say, okay, cool. If I gotta put down this much money to get this car, if I run it out for one month at this rate, then I'll make that money rate back. I got my return on investment. The mm-hmm. rest of it I use my signature for. Yep. And then you just pay at monthly you get in cash flow. And then after the miles get to a certain point, you could just sell the car and then how the cars are right now they sell them for more than what we buying them for and that's what's crazy man all the used cars are selling more for the new cars it's crazy you know what i mean it's i literally a got a call that they wanted to buy the years for a hundred thousand more than what i paid for it right now because they just don't have any cars available it's crazy you know what i mean so it's like it's actually cheaper to buy it new than it is to buy it used that's why people are getting on the wait list did you get <laughs> on the ferrari saying. wait list yeah so i went ahead and put the deposit on the ferrari and um they said it's supposed to come in like in a year and a half or whatnot could be sooner than that. Who knows? I but think it's going to take longer because I think they're going to see the reviews to people seeing it. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to go back and make it look a little bit more aggressive. And I that's felt, the thing. Yeah. They don't, they don't, I don't think they really, because when I talked to the guy at the dealership, he said that it wasn't definitive on that look that everybody yeah. was like still circling around. Yeah. So maybe Ferrari is trying to say that it's not because of the feedback that they got from it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's really hard to say. Yeah. But they I think know. it's just, if they competing with the, the Urus, they need to make it look a lot more aggressive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that Lambo did their thing. Good. Yeah, yeah. yours looks awesome. They did that one. Yeah. Because, you know, all, they, everybody's trying to make a luxury good-looking SUV. They it's kind of hard to do, and, mm-hmm. and they did it. And Ferrari decided to be last in the game because they said they wanted to make the best one out of everybody else. But I'm like, you know, Ferrari, uh, you know, mm-hmm. their cars are great and everything, but, I mean, I don't know if you guys are going to beat what Lambo that already came out mm-hmm. with. But, like you said with the play, right, the reason why I went ahead and got the allocation is because the thing is, a lot of people don't want to wait when the car comes out. Right. See, the thing is, when first, anytime a car is brand new released, everybody's going to want to get it as soon as it comes out and right. they don't want to have to wait. So all I'm going to do is sell my allocation. That's it. Therefore, all I had to do is put that 10K down just to have a place in line. So I'm number 17 in right. the country right now. So the thing is, when my actual bid comes up, somebody else who wants to go in there and get the car, you can pay me 100K, take my spot in line. I jump out of line. You take yeah. it. I never had to buy it. Easy. I never had to buy it. That means I spent no money. No money. No money. I just free free flip. That's what we call it. Free flip. Free flip. It's crazy, man. So many different things. And and, you know, once you start accumulating some wealth, I I say Mm -hmm. like everybody asks us what we do. Mm -hmm. And like when you accumulate a little bit of of wealth, then it's like you're an investor at that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We still have our businesses, but we're investors though, because the money Mm -hmm. that we make, we got to make it make money. Absolutely. Or else it's pointless. I mean, because literally, Mm -hmm. it's just gonna be gone. It's gonna be spent. Mm -hmm. So every dollar that we make has to work. Absolutely. Let's talk about investing. Do you do you invest in any other way, like other than I know you're in a private home healthcare space, mm-hmm. and you went from clearly started from a cubicle, went to real estate a little bit, and then mm-hmm. jumped into private home healthcare. But before I even talk about investing, I wanted to ask you: so how does that transition go to from when you just started off with a couple of houses that y'all had, and mm-hmm. then to where y'all at now? All right, so I'm gonna tell you a really crazy story that nobody else knows. Oh, this you're is gonna, gonna be, be the only person who this ever is, knows this. This is gonna be and quiet. this could even get me in trouble. But you know what? I don't really think it's going to be in trouble because it don't matter because it was so long ago. So what <laughs> happened is we found out that at the state department level, they were basically trying to shut down a lot of the smaller providers, meaning like, you know, people who only had like about 10 personal care homes or whatnot, 
or less. And so there was a lot of agencies that were coming up in Atlanta and everybody was doing well. Everybody was like, you know, servicing clients, but they wanted to give all the business to the large companies. Everybody who was like, you know, a hundred million dollar personal care home firm, they wanted to make sure they had got all the clients. So what happened is they started trying to shut down all the smaller providers around the state of Georgia. So they were trying to start shutting down our agency because we only had about 12 homes. They started shutting down other agencies. So we went from like 12 homes all the way down to two. Mm. And they were basically trying to make sure that this was happening across the board with everybody. And we saw the larger companies continue to get larger because they were we were getting calls of them taking all the residents out of our homes and putting them in their homes. So what I did was I created the Provider Alliance Network. And the Provider Alliance Network was actually a bluff. So what I did was I wanted to integrate all the providers in the state of Georgia to be able to rally against the state to say, look, you can't be trying to put all these smaller companies out of business because these are people's livelihoods. Like these people literally like, you know, depending on this money and income to come in to sustain their lifestyle. So in order to help that situation, I basically made a random Google account. I call it the Provider uh, Alliance Network. And what I did was I sent it to all the state legislation, like mm -hmm. everybody. In the state. I'm talking about like senators. I'm talking about governors, all that stuff. And then I said, look, all the providers are banding together because we want to make sure that we find a way for you guys to not try to shut down all these smaller companies because they're the ones who are creating the backbone of this entire network in the first place. And you guys can't do it without us because these larger companies cannot sustain being able to service all of these individuals who have these health problems that need to be in these homes. And so once that happened, and I CC'd everybody, I put every single provider on that list. I put everybody from state legislation on the list. And when they saw it and I called out specific people, they're like, oh, crap. And I said, we're doing a class action lawsuit against everybody. And so they were like, um, we're going to have to put pause on everything. So they stopped shutting down people's homes. Right now, remember, I did this as just a play, just to make sure that uh, they didn't shut down our home. But what happened was every single provider I put on that list sent me messages. And all these messages were talking about, oh, yeah, the same things happened to me. Oh, they went in here and took my uh, residence. They went in here and stole the clients out of my home. Oh, they went in here and shut down these properties. I took all of these correspondences from hundreds of um, providers, put that together, sent that off. And what happened was a real class action lawsuit happened. Damn. An actual real class action lawsuit <laughs> happened from that. And then it literally stopped everything happening from all these other providers being shut down. Everybody was able to keep their homes. Everybody was able to keep all their properties. And it literally changed the game. Bro, Is that why you call game. yourself Brad Panther? Because you're like a real superhero. <laughs> <laughs> you saved everybody in front of me. Okay. Yeah, That's man. crazy. I was, just, I was just like, look, I can't let people get run over like that because I was just like, there's too many people. And of course, uh, healthcare is all about helping people. I always love to help people. I always wanted to make sure that people were able to succeed. I like seeing people be able to run their businesses. And if you have a good company and you're helping these people who need like this medical assistance, you need to be able to, to keep your business going. They shouldn't be able to take that um, you should be able to take the clients from you and just put them in like a larger uh, freaking facility just because they just want to give all the business to the large providers. I was like, uh-uh, no. Right. Like this, this whole country is built off of small businesses. Mm. You have to have small businesses to be able to keep things running the way they are now. You can't just give everything to the large companies. It don't work that way. That's crazy. So that's why I said I had to go ahead and put a foot in that ass. You know, <laughs> and go ahead and tell them like, look, hey, we ain't standing for that, and so let's go. And then it worked out, you know, and I didn't know it was going to turn out to be as big as it was, mm. but they never knew who was responsible. That's <laughs> well, crazy. They know now. <laughs> they know now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> no, but that's, that's like the small guy, um, you know, winning. That's a big win against the big guy. Yeah, it was. Because that man. happens. A lot of times we always just, just take the L. We got to go along with whatever is just, you know, the powers that be says or does. Yeah, so and that's, so, yeah. And so the main thing is, so when that happened, like I said, I went down from, from 12 homes all the way down to two homes. We already knew that we need to start switching business models. And I had already had an idea in my head that like, look, let's start doing private home health care. We can actually send the nurses to the client's homes because there's a lot of people who would rather actually have the services come to their home versus actually having to be in a personal care home for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. So that's when we got to apply for those services. And once we started, it was funny because the director was like, yeah, you know, uh, once you start this business, it's very competitive. There's a lot of competition. And, you know, you might get like maybe one, maybe two clients or whatnot, you know, within your first year. Man, I looked at my wife. She looked at me. I was like, you don't know who we are. She don't know who we are. <laughs> Blew that thing out. Became a million dollar company within the first eight months. Damn. Literally within the first eight months. And after that, we scaled to like a six million dollar company like within a few years after that. So, I mean, it just took us no time. Like mm -hmm. we knew exactly what we needed to do. We knew how to go in there, especially out of all that hell and heartache that we had from the business before with the first little care homes. Mm -hmm. We already, this is way easier. You know what I mean? So we basically went out there and then, um, you know, we just did our thing. And so it was all about just like, you know, knowing that like you had the power, you had the ability 
to be able to like, you know, create the success that you want just by believing in yourself. Because I was like, it don't matter what somebody tells you. Because, you know, some people can listen to other people giving them advice saying that you're not going to really do that well right. and say and really feel like that's going to be the case. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm not going to do good because they said I'm not going to. No, you tell them, like, look, I don't care what competition is out there. The only competition I have is myself. Fact. You know what I mean? I become a better version of myself every single day. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever I did last time, I need to beat what I did the last time I did whatever it was that I tried to accomplish before. That's a yeah. reality. A lot of people don't mm -hmm. understand that. Like, uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we sometimes just introduce ideas to, you know, a big idea to a small mind anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and then sometimes the problem is that people are, they, they're projecting themselves onto you. Mm -hmm. So them saying you only can get one or two clients is because that's all they could get. Yep. So they're like, yeah, like, bro, you don't got what we got. We got a whole different thing. Absolutely. And that's a testament to also just just y'all. Y'all already yeah. knew what y'all wanted to do. And mm -hmm. like you said, you took it to where you wanted to get it to. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, when, I, when, when they hear this, I want them to understand that it really doesn't matter the business. It really doesn't mm -hmm. matter the industry. Nope. It's just the people. Mm -hmm. Like the people determine. Because like a lot of people, oh, uh, can we do this in this city or this? I'm like, of course you could. But mm -hmm. it's, it's up to you, though. It is. It ain't gonna be me. I can't make you do it. <laughs> yeah. I can't yep. make you get up every day and be on time and, yep. and set up a system, be organized, and mm -hmm. then you know give great customer service. I can't make you do that. Nope, you I can tell you how to do it. Like like you yeah. we you just told us how you got into every industry. You told you how you sold the property. Yeah. People mm -hmm. gonna hear that and be like, mm -hmm. yeah. and then go mm -hmm. right back to the regular yep. programming. <laughs> so some people yep. gonna hear and be like, I'm gonna go do that. Yeah. You get yep. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's just different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean like man, bro, I just wanted to give you a flowers too, man. You doing your thing. Hey man, bro. Hey. The funny thing is, it's cool because we have like, you know, the network that we have of all the people who we've met over the past, what, year? Yeah. Some change? Yeah. Like, we've known each other for a short amount of time, but right. the amount of like uh, success from our group and then like, you know, how um, everybody's been able to like still evolve and develop and everybody's continuing to like, you know, thrive and like, you know, still be able to like grow and grow and grow in their businesses is phenomenal. Man, it's you know dope. I mean? the, I've like, never had a network like this before. What about you? You have, yeah, have we, you ever I, seen I never it? Have I've, I've never, never I've, seen, I've never seen anything like this. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. look like us. That's the, that's the crazy part of it. like us, bro. <laughs> yeah. So when we was in Miami, so we just came from the course of Raleigh in Miami where we just mm -hmm. raced the Lambos through the streets. And all of us, like, and you know, our whole Atlanta group, we really shut the scene down. Maybe we shut it down, man. And it's like, what, 20 of us? <laughs> man, or what? Like that? And yeah. we're the only ones of color, actually, yeah. for the whole rally, if you think about it. It's it was nuts. just our Atlanta crew, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And we come in revving hard. So we look for the ATL, <laughs> man. It, rem it yeah. just reminds me of like when they talk about Black Panther again, like Wakanda is in Atlanta. Yeah, we could have came up here with the X's like, yeah, yeah. Hey, Wakanda, but we wore, we wore the, uh, the uh, rapper athlete entrepreneur shirts, man. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so to rep for, uh, shout out to Neo, new ACEO, um, it's two weeks yeah. out. Mm -hmm. That's the brand, uh, you know, the uh, entrepreneur. So we had yep. to go out there and, and rep for the gang, man. And it's dope Absolutely. to be able to do that. Like, It is, it, it is. Yeah, so, um, yeah, bro. So I wanted to ask you, you got your dream house. You got you you married. You got your dream cars. What's next? Like, what you gonna get next, bro? See, my main thing is I like seeing other people become successful. Ooh. So my next thing is like really just being able to help create as many multi million dollar companies as possible. Like before we started doing like the healthcare game plan, like we had about five people that we had brought into the business, mm -hmm. and uh, Jonathan Gucci, of course, was one of them. Mm -hmm. And like they all became million dollar companies within the first year. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, you know what? Like we've already created five other million dollar companies we might as well go ahead and do it with other people so we can be able to help them do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so right now we got about maybe about close to about 80 people under mentorship right now. Mm. And the people who have already gotten approved are earning crazy salaries right now. I mean, we got a person like in that first week of just going out there once getting approved already at $250,000 a year. Dang. Like one of Chana's best friends already at like um, 975,000 mm. for the whole entire year. Then we got um, six other people in between 750K 600k uh, another one 800k and another one at uh 460k and wow. i'm like and i'm like they're all just growing their businesses and like you know it takes like you know about six to seven months to get approved but like once they get approved man like the way that these people have been like just earning and and, and going out there getting their clients and being able to scale their business has been phenomenal but that's what we teach though because you know we want to be able to see as many successful companies as possible and it's just we're seeing it in real time now so if I can give back in a way to where like I can like help people become, you know, really successful and help them help them create multi million dollar companies, then shoot, man, hey, my work here is done. You For know sure. what I mean? That's, bro, that's superhero work though. I, yeah. I think about it like that, like, cause me, I'm in the coaching space as well. I teach people how to do what I do. And and what's cool about what we do is we literally someone pays us one time and then we teach them how to make money forever. Mm -hmm. It's great when you mm -hmm. really think about it. And it's like, clearly we undercharge. 
Mm-hmm. But we teach them how to make million dollar companies like you what you're saying. And, and in normal business, if somebody goes somewhere, they just pay somebody and then they mm-hmm. just keep coming to pay them. Yep. Like with us, you pay us and then we teach you how to do what we do. And now you literally are able to create something for you, your family, whoever else you tell. And that's the dopest thing about it. So we got like the best job in the world. Like mm-hmm. that's why I feel like. Oh yeah, we do. We it's, do. It's crazy. Because you get to empower so many people. And then on top of that, the thing is, it becomes like a trickle down effect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because all these people become successful. They get to help their communities. They get yeah. to help the people that they know. And then everybody starts building wealth in the communities as a whole. Because mm-hmm. like the more we're helping other people, the more they help more of our communities. And the more that everybody starts growing and everybody starts uh, gaining that financial independence. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way that we'll be able to like, you know, finally start, you know, creating like financial stability become between like, you know, the African-American community, which we've been down for so long. You Crazy. Know what I mean? Crazy. So, it just takes people like us to go out there and start pumping it up, pumping it up. That's what we doing, man. And, and it changes things. You talked about Gooch, man. That's that's my brother, man. I know y'all are close too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you turned him up. You taught him mm-hmm. how to get in uh, private home health care. Mm-hmm. And he's going crazy. Oh yeah, he's killing it, man. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. The, how you how's it make so, you feel so when you see him, him man? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm beyond proud. I've known Gooch since he was like 18. Crazy. You know, I'm like, who's this little kid over here? I man, we was riding motorcycles together, and I was mm-hmm. like, man, who's this little kid over here with this six series? You know, looking all young, flashing all this money, living at the 12. I was like, don't make no sense. <laughs> and then I was just like, you know, just seeing his development and seeing his growth over the years. And then, you know, he's done pretty well and stuff for himself for a while. But I was just like, look, man, like you'll kill it even crazier if you start doing this healthcare thing. And he was right. like, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and do it. And then once he did, hey, he killed it. He did the same thing like we did. Million dollar company in the first year, you know? And that's all it is, just building up, building up, building up. And so, um, you know, I'm crazy proud of my brother, man. Like, man, crazy, that's so crazy dope, proud. man. I, mm-hmm. I'd be proud when I see all of y'all, man, just because y'all are like people that that people can mirror now. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. Remember, like, one of the first times that we did meet each other was actually literally going to do like the uh, the shutdown at the Kroger. Yep. And then, like, we were all just like giving back, and we got to see like the looks on people's faces, that and was like, it, you know, man. how much it meant to everybody when we were just going there. And the thing is. That was just doing that because we knew how hard it was during like the pandemic. Right. You know, we knew that people like really, really needed like, you know, assistance. Folks was like, man, I don't even know what I was going to do for Thanksgiving. I didn't know if I was going to be able to eat, feed my family, sure. stuff like that. Those are genuine concerns for a lot of people. Absolutely. You know? And so for us to be able to go out there and do that, man, it's just no other better feeling than to see the gratification of people being happy about the fact that you were able to help them out of the situation they thought they had no way out of. It's crazy. You know? And then right after that, you did Walmart, right? And then we did Walmart did right Walmart. after that. Yep. That's and then Mitch crazy. came on through the support for that. We did a hundred thousand dollar giveaway there, and that was freaking insane. It was dope, man. That, like the people, you could <laughs> tell, man, how thankful they was, how grateful they was. Like mm-hmm. it was crazy. I mean, that it was some people frustrated, but you know, I'm sure they was happy when they got inside. Oh, they were real happy when they got inside. <laughs> they were happy when they got inside. <laughs> they got the, and they get their free gifts and stuff like that. And that's mm-hmm. all it's about, man. Us even being able to do that and mm-hmm. then doing it in a way where. People can be inspired at the same time mm-hmm. because, you know, most of the time, like people who look like us, we don't we don't have someone in the mirror. Like I was saying, like we look at athletes mm-hmm. for real. We look at actors and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Clearly, um, you know, drug dealers, mm-hmm. like when they come from our neighborhood, we're like, oh, yeah, that's the only way I can get money like that is a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. We glorify these things like yeah. on in rap and movies. And like, like, that's what we look to do. That's why we end up being mm-hmm. where we be. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, to be able to see a person like you and your wife and, you know, Gooch and all these people that you've inspired to be able to see people like y'all doing it in a different way, mm-hmm. it's dope. Like, so that's why I love to be a part of anything that y'all do. And every time it's a situation, man, and y'all come support me as well, which is our I, I definitely appreciate you that. You gotta support our boy, man. Can you family, man, you bro? Did. Come on, you already know. Family all day. It's, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be like that forever, man. Like, And I wanted you to come on the pod because I wanted people to hear your story because I know, like, not only do you, like, you know, you're successful, but your personality is bubbly and, like, the way you look at life is different. So I wanted everybody to be able to see that and be inspired by that, bro, because you inspire me all the time. Bro, you inspire me too. The same, like, we all inspire each other, man. That's, that's, why, the, that's the whole thing. thing about the circle, man. Everybody inspires each other, man. Anytime you see somebody else doing good, Anytime you see somebody else winning, like we all support each other right. in their winnings. Nobody's like, oh man, I can't believe he's doing this or doing that. Like nobody's hating on each other because it's all love, man. It's all, and it's always going to be love. Okay. Know? So before I let you get off of here, um, I know you got a course and I know you got a mentorship program. Mm-hmm. Are you going to give people a discount for watching the No Fluff show? Absolutely. Of course. <laughs> yeah. For my guy, all day. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I'm going to have it, I'm going to drop it underneath this, um, this actual uh, video. And I'm going to have y'all be able to follow you on Instagram. What's your social media? So it's uh, at Brad Panther. 
at Brad Panther, the real T'Challa. If y'all don't know who T'Challa is, this is him hey, right here. Let's go. I love my superheroes. And you know what I mean? He did the real Ninja <laughs> Warrior. So y'all keep an eye out for the next season as well because he's going to be on that. Absolutely. I'm going to drop all the links below to all his stuff so y'all can be able to tap in with him because this is a must follow. This is a person who y'all need to be able to see, talk to. If you get the chance to be around this guy, I'm telling you to change your life. Hey, it's all love, man. I just appreciate you having me here, man. Because you already know. Man, I love it. You already know. <laughs> all right. Well, this is your boy, Pushman Mitch. Brad Panther, No Fluff the Podcast. We out of here. You dig? Let's go.